Like, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. That is the real tea. Like, that's just that on that. What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Nyle Ann, and we are back with another video. In today's video, I will be giving you guys five tips and tricks to pass your written cosmetology exam the first try. And I know, have y'all probably watching this video, it's probably like your second, third, fourth, or maybe even you haven't even taken it yet, and you just like, what do I need to study for? What do I need? What do I need to know? So look no further, I am here, and I have the handy dandy book, and we are gonna go ahead and get right into it. So as always, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with your mama, your daddy, your sister, your cousin, and all your relatives, cause we on the road to 1K, baby. Period. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, y'all. So like I said, you're either on your first go round, second go round, third go round. And I'm just here to give you guys a couple tips and tricks that I use that helped me be successful. Um, so I took my cosmetology written exam about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, two almost three weeks ago. Um, and so I just decided to make this video because I know when I was trying to get ready to take my exam, I was all up and down YouTube like, oh my gosh, what do I need? Oh my gosh, what should I study? Oh my gosh, what do I need to know? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And really, it really wasn't as hard as I was making it, to be honest. So before we get into it, I'm just going to give you guys a quick overview. Um, so I took my cosmetology written exam about two weeks ago and really the test was not as hard as I feel like I made it. So I really just wanted to come and give you guys a lot of tips and tricks because when I was looking uh, on YouTube, I mean, I saw some things that were helpful, but then I saw a lot of things that really just did not pertain to what I needed to study and what I needed to know. A lot of it was just how they did it and what scores they got. And I'm gonna tell you guys the scores that I got or whatever, and you know, what to expect when you walk into the exam, but I'm also going to tell you what you need to study. So make sure you guys have a pen, a paper, an iPad, a tablet, a cell phone. Make sure you guys have whatever you need and are tapping in to this part right here. So like I said, I took my test two weeks ago. Um, so there are 112 questions, I believe, on the test. It could be 110, but it was around 110, 112. So you need to realize that some of the questions will not count. So for me, um, one of the hard questions I actually ended up getting right or whatever, like two or three of them. So my raw score, well my, you know, raw score, the score that I made before they did any deductions and took this off and took that off and put that on and put that off or whatever, I made an 82. So when they took the questions off, it did bring my score down to a 79. But I mean, I really wasn't tripping because I mean, a pass is a pass. And you're gonna get that license regardless. Um, I definitely do feel like I probably could have done a little bit better, but the questions that I got wrong, I know exactly what questions they were. I, I already knew when I walked in, like this section right here is not the best section for me. And lo and behold, lo and behold, it was on the test. So with all of that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into number one. Okay, y'all. So number one is to study sanitation and TDLR rules. Guys, that was maybe 40 to 50 questions on my test. And I know that everybody sees like the little breakdown. If I can find a picture of like the breakdown for the test, I will put it on you. Side. I know everybody can see the breakdown of like the questions that they're gonna ask, but a lot of the questions that are in other sections really just generate back to sanitation. Um, they'll ask some questions about hair, but even though they're asking about certain hairstyles, they're asking, what sanitary measure would you take during this type of situation or during that type of situation, if that makes sense. So make sure you guys really, really, really memorize some of those key points in sanitation. You know, when should you wash your hands? How long you should immerse your products? You know, your tools or your equipment? Um, what type of tools can and cannot be immersed? Um, the type of EPA solutions? Make sure you guys really, really, really know that stuff because that was a lot of stuff that I seen on my test. And not to mention, in the sanitation area, there were a lot of duplicate questions. And it wasn't like the super easy questions that were the duplicates. It was really like, the questions that were like, 
I think that's the right answer because of the way that it's worded, but I'm not entirely sure. Lo and behold, question number one is definitely gonna be question number 38. So make sure you guys have brushed up on your sanitation, brushed up on your TDLR rules, TDLR expectations, TDLR inspect, uh, inspection expectations. Um, make sure you guys know all of that information because that is going to be a vital, vital part on your um, TDLR exam. Okay, y'all, so now we're gonna get on to number two. Okay, so the second thing that I did personally that I feel like was a really big help is I printed out my school's learning curriculum and I color coded everything. So when I say print out your school's curriculum, um, at the beginning of either every phase or the beginning of your process, your journey through cosmetology school, I'm not really sure how they do it for every school, but I'm gonna do it for, of course, the school that I went to. So the school that I went to, basically I went on to our portal, which was Elevate at the time. So I went out to Elevate, I went into like my learning, kind of like your learning sector where they tell you, this is what you're gonna know, this is how many tests you have, this is what's due this week, this is what's due that week. I kind of took that and I printed it off and I really color coded everything red, green, or yellow, like the traffic lights basically. So if I color coded green, you're not gonna wanna study that as much. I mean, that's the stuff that you know without a shadow of a doubt you have. So for me, the braiding section and stuff like that, I know pretty much everything. It was super, super easy in school. So I really didn't focus that hard when it came to that section. But then when you have sections such as like your permanent waves and your thermoglycolates and stuff like that, I would circle that, well, I would color code that red just because I know, okay, this is not my strongest area. So I wanna make sure that I'm hitting this hard. I wanna make sure that I'm studying those ingredients. I wanna make sure that I'm studying this, studying that. So whatever, however you have access to you guys is learning curriculum, learning objectives, lesson plans, whatever y'all wanna call them. However you see those, make sure you guys print those off and color code it because what you do not want to do is overstudy. Like you don't wanna overstudy something that you already know. So if you're already familiar with the 12 hue color wheel, there is no reason to study the 12 hue color wheel every single day when you have a whole bunch of stuff like permanent waves and relaxers and scalp and nail disorders and stuff like that that you don't know. Study the things that you know for sure are not your best areas. So I always tell people, well, I did this even with my ACT. I would always write down the lesson plans or the stuff that I knew would be on the test. And I'm gonna color code, go in and see, okay, I know this, so we're gonna push this to the back burner. I don't know this, so we're gonna use this. So kind of take it however you want. You can label it however you like, um, with whatever colors you like, obviously. I just use red, yellow, and green because it was like super easy and I know, I mean, I drive cars, so red, yellow, green, stop, go, go over it a little bit more, you know. So that's basically all I have for number two. Now we're gonna get on to number three. Okay, so number three is to study in sectionals. Do not, and I'm gonna say this again, do not cram. Do not overstudy. Do not overstimulate yourself when you really do not have to. Um, so what I did was I tried to schedule my exam two weeks out. Um, I had been doing a little bit of studying. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I really wasn't studying like every day or every other day. Um, before then, I would just make sure that I go through, um, you know, like your lesson plans when we had school or when I was in school, I would go through my tests, make sure if it's some questions that I, you know, got wrong on one of the exams, I would make sure I wrote that question down so that when it's time for me to study, I know exactly what I need to study, exactly what I don't know, exactly, you know, a lot of the things that you need. So what I like to do is I like to study in maybe like one to two hour increments. Um, I really was not studying four, five, six hours at a time. Like, I feel like that is completely overdoing it and you will forget everything. So what I did was I would go in, I would maybe study for maybe an hour and a half, two hours, and then I would take a quick break, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, maybe even an hour break, just relax, clear my mind, come back at it, try to do like a little practice test, a little, you know, flashcard action, try to do something to see if I know what I just studied, you know, if I retained that information. And if I did, I moved on to the next section. So I really wasn't sitting down for eight hours a day studying this book, like 
girl, you definitely need to, you definitely need to go in here and do everything. Like, girl, I was not about to do all that. I studied for maybe two hours. I'm fat, so I like to eat. I stopped, got me something to eat, something to drink. Um, you know, walked around the house for a little bit, came back, studied a little bit more. Um, I feel like that really helped me retain the information because I didn't feel like I was overworking myself or overdoing it, trying to shove a lot of information into my brain that you either know, don't know, kind of know, need a little bit of refresher on. Make sure you guys study at your own pace. Don't study eight hours a day. This is not a job. You ain't finna be doing all that. It's only a hundred questions. Study for about two hours, two and a half hours at the max i feel like that should be the absolute max i anything past two hours i feel like it's just too long you're not going to be as engaged as you are in the first 30 minutes when you get to you know hour number two so take some breaks don't cram anything take your time make sure that you know the information that you are looking over it's no point of studying if you're just skimming through everything trying to make sure you get it all Work through um, what I did. I had maybe 12 or 13 chapters for my entire time. So I wanna say I did like two chapters a day. Um, and after that, pretty much I felt confident. I feel like I knew everything. When I did my little practice tests or my little flashcards with myself, I was able to literally figure it out. If I didn't know it, you know, if it was a, um, let's say a multiple choice type of flashcard, it was very, very easy for me to decipher because I know I just studied this. I just practiced this. I just saw this question. I just saw this flashcard. So it makes it a whole lot easier versus, you know, not being able to really retain any of the information and you're trying to just walk in there expecting to pass with a 99 and you're gonna be sad, babe, because I'm telling you, you're gonna get a 50. I'm telling you, this is me telling you, you will get a 50 if you be cramming and doing all that other stuff. Take your time and study, guys. Take your time, okay? So. This kind of, the last section kind of went back into number four. So we're gonna go ahead and get into number four. Number four is to utilize Quizlets, practice exams, and flashcards. So basically what I did was I went onto Google and I think I actually did take a screenshot of some of the free uh, websites or whatever that I used. So I'm gonna put them on the side here or here so you guys can see. But I did go into Google and I typed in free cosmetology practice tests. Um, a lot of the times when I was looking on YouTube, I saw a whole bunch of people were paying like $25, $30, $15, and I'm not about to pay for no test that I'm only taking one day. Like, you have to be confident that you're going to pass that month the first time, because I'm not paying it. Like, I'm not doing it. So, I literally went onto Google, literally typed in free cosmetology written exam, and I want to say I put the year 2021 just because, I mean, 2022 just started. So I know that there has been a whole year past. So clearly somebody has put something on the web for you guys to study. Um, I found about four or five good sites that I would say, um, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna try to put them up here. Um, really, all you have to do is sign up with your email. And some of them you really don't have to, but you go in, you can either print the test off. Some of them you can take them. Um, I personally am a written type of person. So I printed the test off um went through answered it went back you know after i finished the test or whatever got my answer key went over the stuff that i didn't know marked it down wrote the right answer and why it was correct just because with me i feel like i need a reason for everything so if i can put a reason with this i'm going to be able to process it better um quizlet as i know anybody that's been in school high school elementary y'all all know about quizlet and if you don't baby you have been under a rock Quizlet is literally one of the free sources that gives you so much, like so many different subjects from health to math to English to anatomy to cosmetology to esthetician. Um, make sure that you guys utilize Quizlet. I would go onto Quizlet. I would type in, um, I want to say I typed in like cosmetology written exam prep or cosmetology TDLR prep. And there are like 50, 60 different questions, I mean, 60 different tests that you guys can take so that you guys have, you know, a way to practice that's not just something that you're looking at. There's the answer, there's the question. Something that you actually have to, you know, flip through, click through, swipe through, type through, whatever it is. So make sure you guys utilize those cards, utilize those quizlets, utilize those practice tests, utilize every single resource that you have. The best type of studying that you can do is practice test like i ain't even gonna lie to y'all that is 
the real tea. Like, that's just that on that. The best test that you can take before your test, the best way to study, the best type of learning situation, the best type of, I don't know, I'm looking for the word, I'm looking for the word, I'm looking for the word. The best type of learning that you can teach yourself, the best type of studying, however you want to put it, is practice tests because that way you're able to see what it's going to be like when you really take your test. You're not going to have the answers right next to you. So if I don't know this question, this is something that I really don't know. So that lets you know, okay, you need to study in this area a little bit harder. You need to study in this area a little bit harder. Make sure you guys use all of your resources to your advantage. And a lot of these resources, everybody, are free. A lot of them are free. They are going to take a little bit of, you know, looking into because you have to make sure that this is really a cosmetology exam or this is really some type of legit type of thing. Um, but really, in about 30 minutes, I found all the tests that I studied on literally the entire course of my two weeks. All you have to do is go into Google, go into Safari, go into Bing, go into wherever you type in search the web wherever you do any of that type of stuff type in free cosmetology practice test there are so many different things from practical work all the way to theory like it's so many different things that you're going to be seeing that you're going to be able to test your knowledge on so just utilize all of those free resources okay and now the final one is number five okay number five and this is not even study related this is not prep related Number five happens when you are in the room taking the exam. Do not change your answers. I'm going to say it again. Do not change your answers. Nine times out of ten, the first answer that you suspect is right is the first answer that it is. I mean, you've been studying this information. You've been retaining this information. You've been looking over this for months or a year or however long it's been since you've went to school, practice, started studying, and even prepare for your test. You know this information. Do not doubt yourself. You are gonna be your greatest enemy. When I went into that test room, I told myself, Kanaya, I don't care what, cause I'm really good at psyching myself out. I literally had to tell myself mid-test, I don't care what I think it is. The first answer that I pick is the first answer that I'm sticking with. And lo and behold, I passed. Lo and behold. So make sure y'all, y'all do not change your answers. Be confident in your answers. The first answer you suspect, once you select it, unless you accidentally selected it, and that really, like you meant to pick B, but you pick C, unless you did it something like that, do not change your answers nine times out of a thousand, 99 times out of a hundred. That is the right answer. Do not change your answer. When you pick your answer, stand by it. And I mean, if it's wrong, we just gonna have to retake that test. Stand by your answer. Stand by what you know. You know, I mean, I'm kind of spiritual, so I kind of took it that way. I mean, you know that what God has put in you. You know what you learned. You know all the stuff. So I just kind of said a prayer. Lord, bring everything back to my remembrance. I went in there, took the test, didn't change any answers, and I passed. Make sure you guys stick with your first mind. Your first mind is your best mind. Stick with your mind. If your mind says the answer is A, don't come back to it at the end and be like, no, it might be C, it might be C. Don't be weak in the knees. Stand up. Stand up. Stand for the answer that you know is right. If you know without a shadow of a doubt the answer is A, just because you came back, don't let your nerves talk you out of it. Pick A. Pick A. If you pick A and you know that that's the right answer, do not talk yourself out of your answer. You will fail every single time. Y'all, I have taken insurance tests. I have taken STAR exams, ACTs, SATs, all these important tests. Do not change your answer. When you change your answer, nine times out of 10, you will get it wrong. Make sure you guys are confident the entire time. You know the type of strength that you have. You know that you're smart. You know that you're gonna, you know what I'm saying? You know that you got this. You know you got this in the bag. Walk in there as if it's already done. You just walk in there to get your license. Literally, you have to walk in there like you already won because you have, like we already have the victory. Don't walk in there defeated. Don't walk in there all nervous and stuff. Say you a prayer, eat you some breakfast. If it was up to me, I'll tell you to get you some Chick-fil-A. Don't ask me for no money. I ain't got no money for you, but get you some Chick-fil-A. Get you some, shoot, McDonald's, burgers, Zaxby's, whatever you eat. Get you some of that. Schedule your test 
walk in there with confidence like you know without a shadow of a doubt you have already passed and it's already done i'm telling y'all if you follow these rules that i'm giving y'all i promise i promise you you will pass i promise you you will pass and strong do the dead gun thing y'all already know y'all got it and i am definitely rooting for all of you if you guys by chance take your cosmetology exam and you pass leave a comment on this video because i definitely want to congratulate you y'all cosmetology school well really school period is not easy it gets tough it gets challenging but you are at the end of the road if you are watching this video you are almost at the end of the road you have finished the road and you just trying to walk past the finish line like you got this take your time i believe in you believe in yourself shoot god believe in you i'm sure all y'all parents and family believe in you like do this for you you got this okay guys that is it for this video this video is super super long already i do not want to drag it on anymore thank you guys so much for watching this video please be sure to like comment and subscribe and like i said if you pass your test baby leave me a comment let me congratulate you let me put some love on you i'm speaking nothing but positivity into the atmosphere if you are taking a test i do wish you all the best of luck like i said earlier you got this believe in yourself i believe in you and the world needs so many more cosmetologists, estheticians, barbers, lawyers, doctors. They need so much of everything. So go ahead, be you, do you, so we can have another another sister in the industry, another brother in the industry. Like, we got this. Y'all got this. I believe in you all. I love you guys so, so much. Don't forget to share this video with your mama, your daddy, your sister, your cousin, and all your relatives because we on the road to 1K, baby. Period. And that's a wrap for this video. I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.